Team, we need to figure out how we can sell more keyboards and make more money. We can get Mr. Beast to promote our keyboards. Hey, let's sponsor the number one esports team in the world. Or we can do an honest review of the keyboard your model 100. Hello Digmates, my name is Dominique and in today's video we'll be giving our honest thoughts on the Keyboardio Model 100. A keyboard that was made with love. Everything started when Jesse embarked on a quest to make his dream keyboard in 2012. His project gained high demand online, prompting Kaya to leave her job and join forces with him to start their own company. Together, they tackled challenges like limited electronics knowledge, manufacturing hurdles, and unreliable suppliers. Despite setbacks, their determination paid off. Their first product was the Keyboardio Atreus. Then we saw the emergence of the Keyboardio Model 01, which is the predecessor of the Keyboardio Model 100. Not many people know this, but we've actually had the pleasure of knowing Jesse and Kaya's journey since the inception of Digma. In fact, our firmware and software are built upon the solid foundation of theirs. Now let's get into business and talk about, first, the purchasing experience. This is the Keyboardio website. Keyboardio offers a choice between two finishes, walnut or maple. Then the switches. Keyboardio offers a curated range that caters to different preferences. The best part, they're hot swappable. And all these options cost the same. Speaking of price, the body alone is $349. And if we include the tenting, that goes up to $374. And then we have shipping protection and shipping fees. So there are several shipping options you can choose from. Each with an approximate tax. The total that we paid was $452. Without the tenting, the shipping fee is reduced to $45. So this is worth considering before hitting that buy button. For this keyboard review, I would need the help of a keyboard expert. Someone who has dedicated a good seven years of his life to learning and creating world-class ergonomic keyboards. Luis, our CEO. So thanks for joining us, Luis. You're welcome. So you have there in front of you Keyboardio's Model 100 keyboard. Let's start with the unboxing and uh, you can tell us what you think. Sure. Okay, so something nice is that the box is black and this is an extra cost. It's quite difficult is to make the edges dark. Here is 50-50, so I would say it's nicer than just a random box. So. Apart from, from that, the box seems fairly sturdy and I think the box comes in, inside another box, so this should be good protection uh, for the keyboard. It has a nice emboss here, uh, high resolution, so that's nice. And it also has the logo here, zippers, uh, something that may be not valued much. This is a zipper that uh, prevents dust uh, getting inside. Okay, so the first impression is that my understanding of this keyboard, this is a premium keyboard. But then when I open the box, I feel like if I buy, let's say, a microwave, I open the box and I see the, the back part of the microwave. As a customer, I would expect to see the nicest part of the product. I think I can understand the logic. This is very functional, right? Because this fits in any backpack. And when yeah. you open, you have the, the cables. It's quite functional. But from an unboxing experience, it's lacking. It's like they missed the opportunity to, to, to wow. wow. Exactly, exactly. Nice timing. <laughs> exactly, we're connected. We will uh, continue digging deeper and try to understand why they solved it this way. What's included then? Yeah, tweezers. This is to, to pull out the switches. Screwdriver. I must say, nice screwdriver with the logo and it's a metal one. It has also multiple heads. Mm -hmm. That's nice too. I I'm not sure if all of them are required, but if they're not required, it's a nice touch that they have some extra heads. Okay, what does we have? USB-C to USB-A and two cables to connect each half. Choosing this connector, it's a very weird choice, mm -hmm. but I guess it's a very secure choice. Once you plug it in, you cannot unplug it without pushing this little flap. Yeah. Okay, nice, so let's... Nice. Before we were talking about how they miss the, the opportunity to wow the user, analyzing it from the functional point of view, there's an extra layer. I think this is EVA. I'm not completely sure, but it's kind of rigid, but at the same time elastic enough. If it receives any kind of impact, it will absorb the impact. So this yeah. is protecting the keyboard. But if we would be trying to wow the customer, so I guess we would kind of do it like this. 
that would be the nice way of opening it but then it shouldn't have these two flaps then all this stuff that was here on the top should be underneath you open it and you see the, the keyboard. keyboard you're into this aesthetic you've bought it probably that would be a really nice experience like you open it and you're like wow anyway so then they would need to figure out how to put all of this uh, cables and stuff on the bottom part. But then they will be facing the challenge of how you ensure that the keycaps are not crashing against each other and mm -hmm. how you attach it. Maybe put something here to hold it. Yeah, like probably something, these little flaps are rigid and you can move them holding it here mm -hmm. and holding it here in both ways. Yeah. Maybe Kevorio can take a look at the video and tell us, well, we thought about this and we cannot because this, this, this and that. And that could be an interesting conversation. But I must say, this little box, it's nice quality. Moving to the keyboard. So I think to make a fair judgment of the product, we need to first understand who's buying this, who's made for, and what kind of aesthetic, in this case, keyboard they are trying to accomplish. Because for example, in my case, I'm not a big fan of wood finishing keyboard, but if I was thinking, if I like this finishing, would I like this keyboard? I'm pretty sure yes, because I think the execution fits the style. First of all, the wood, that's a really nice, smooth touch. It has been varnished and polished probably. There's imperfections, but it doesn't matter because it's wood. An organic thing is not like a factor is gonna be stamping uh, wood. The vibe that this keyboard gives me is more like a 50s, 60s, this kind of wood, uh, large desks, chair. At the same time, it's very organic because the keycaps are shaped in a kind of curvy way. So it brings a little bit of the modern style, but it's inside this large wood block. It kind of transports me to that era. Like if this were built in the 60s, this would be the most avant-garde of that time. Yeah, exactly. There's a style retro futuristic. Mm -hmm. In this case, it would be more like we travel to the 60s and this would be like, wow, mind blown, you know? Yeah. And fit the style. Something peculiar is that the keyboard is really thick. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't say it's a stylistic choice. I think it's more related to the function, but also impacts the style and the aesthetics of the keyboard. It's very thick, but the height of the palm rest, it's quite nice. It's easier to reach the keys because the palm is elevated, right? Mm -hmm. And they've continued this flat surface and it looks clean, but at the same time, it creates a very bulky look. They wanted to have it made in wood and it's flat. It looks bulky, but it's okay. They embrace it. That's fine. But this has a consequence. It impacts how the keycaps look. Okay, so for example, uh, with the Race or the Defy, we could have done something similar by raising the top panel mm -hmm. and hiding the bottom side of, of the, the keycaps. So getting into the keycaps, an advantage of having this extra material here that covers the keycaps is that your keycaps can be taller. You can see that the keycap is quite, quite taller. The finishing of the keycaps in the bottom side matters less because you're never gonna even see the edge. We can see that in this keycap, it has been clipped here yeah. and here. That in our keycaps, if you can see, there's not a, a white mark, but you can see where it was clipped here, but it's very unnoticeable. And I think also you can see a little bit of the paint inside yeah. black paint. We would probably discard this keycap. I think it's completely fine that this is here because you cannot see the edge of these keycaps in any way. I kind of like thinner keyboards. It looks less heavy, something that you have in, in your desk. It like, looks more minimalistic. Yeah. But again, I'm putting myself in the shoes of someone that likes this kind of larger devices and likes the wood style. I think this was executed really nicely. Getting into the keycaps, paint looks good, texture-wise looks good too. The legends are really crisp, that's good too. They have homing bars in the J and for your pinky as well. Yeah, actually that's a really nice touch. And also there's another little bump here on the backspace key. But I must say that even though it's a great idea on execution, I find it useless. And the reason behind it is doesn't matter how I put my finger, I cannot touch that little bump. For it to touch it, it's so low that I would need to press this button and slide my hand downwards. It was functional, it should have been on the top part yeah. of the keycap. But I think the idea is really good. It's just the execution should have been on top. Something nice about this design is that they've made rounded keys. And when you're using your thumb to hit the keys, you're hitting on the side. I'm moving from key to key. It's a much nicer feeling, feeling yeah. than having straight keys. Yeah. And actually, if you check the Defy, if we compare the thumb shape, it's nice that it has this roundness. And when we were designing Defy, we considered this. It was better to have a flat surface where your finger doesn't get stuck, but because it's rounded, it doesn't have any kind of negative feeling or anything yeah. like this. But with this key, we kind of have an issue because we have a wall. And actually what we've done, it's kind of rounded. That is the same solution that they've done. But for the finger, it feels uh, quite rounded and it's quite comfortable. Actually, and this keyboard is quite heavy. What do you think? I think it's heavier than the Race, but it's not too heavy. I would say it's heavier than the Race without denting kit, but with denting kit, the Race is a little bit heavier. And so it's probably in the one kilo area, but it has a nice weight. Continuing with build quality, so uh, turning it around. Oh, I know what you would change here. For sure, screws. screws would be black. Yeah, so they are not so visible. But 
black screws have an issue. If that paint or that coating is great quality, if you're gonna be unscrewing them, at some point they're gonna be chipped. The paint won't last forever. So. The rubber feet are quite nice. Mm -hmm. uh, spheres are the best shape because it allows you to drag the keyboard in any kind of way and it's always going to be working fine at the same time it seems that like the thickness it's nice so no problem over there it can't be removed easily also it's really glued there unless yeah you would need to use a tool like something like this and rip it off yeah. so a good quality there something that i know that we would discard it but i think it's okay uh, for keyboard you, is the tolerances between the bottom and the top panel. Uh, here probably is like there's two millimeters and here I could see maybe 0 0 0.7 and this is more like 0 0.4 probably. Apart from having a different tolerance in each side of the keyboard, at the same time it looks like here there's an extra operation where probably they've CNC'd an extra piece of wood because they could not fit the base. But right? is, is that because wood expands uh, and they wanted to have that tolerance. That, that's a great point, yes. So wood is organic. Even if you're CNCing it, temperature and the humidity make wood span and contract. Maybe imagine they did it and they had it in a warehouse for a couple of months. In those two months, maybe the dimensions of the wood slightly changed. Or for example, yeah. it could happen that while they were doing the process, the manufacturer made a mistake and it's slightly off mm -hmm. and they had to retouch it. These are things that could happen. Being wood, I would accept these tolerances because wood is a very difficult material to have a perfect nanometric precision. But if this was aluminum, uh, we would discard it for sure. So another nice thing is that it has this little uh, screw hole where you can probably mount it on a tripod. And I guess these arrows are for the plastic joiners. Yep. We can see there's two different ones. Uh, this one is completely flat. This has a little bump. So let's attach it. Nice. Okay, so now the keyboard is attached. So basically now it's like one keyboard yeah. instead of being two sides. So that's nice. There's a little bit of flex, but on the desk it doesn't matter. You would never notice, notice it. it. As a solution, I don't find it too elegant, but it's functional. This cable is to connect both sides. Okay, secure click, same here. Okay, so now it's attached. Uh, the amount of distance is really small, but it's completely fine. I it's 10 centimeters, if I'm not mistaken. And to be honest, they designed the keyboard to have a very short cable, and they even did this special hole to fit it, but later they decided to add an extra cable just in case people wanted to split it more, like the original design was. Okay, so let's try the, the other one. This plastic joiner has an incline in the middle. So this is for some extra tenting, but as you did right now, it scares me a little bit that it's so wobbly. It gives me the feeling that something is gonna break. You're not gonna be doing like this while you're typing with your arms, so it shouldn't affect your uh, typing experience. But actually, even when you exert a little bit of force, it's wobbly. I think the idea behind it is good. Let's tent it a little bit. To work, probably, I would add a little piece of plastic here that reaches the desk. Let's say, let's use this for example. Okay. Uh -huh. Now the wobble stops when it hits the extra piece that I just added. So uh, probably they could have added like 15 millimeters to 20 millimeters piece down there. I wanted to ask you about how you would change the case. Getting into ergonomics, the Keyboardio Model 100 has very nice keycaps. The sculpt shape is, is nice and they have all this organic shape and so on, talking about aesthetics and so on. But there's something that for me doesn't make much sense that is this shape with this design because it kind of looks like a butterfly and their logo is a butterfly. If I'm thinking about using the keyboard, it's designed in a way that if your fingers are completely straight with the keys, your hand is at the edge. Mm -hmm. If my fingers are straight, then my hand is at the edge. Yeah. If I just slightly twist the keyboard because whatever, I find it more comfortable than my, my hand is actually outside. And if my elbow is not at the height of this surface and my wrist is going downward, then my wrist touching the edge and is uncomfortable. The thickness of the keyboard, that's the shape of the keyboard, makes it so that the right position is very narrow. And you could say that's a design choice and that's a good design choice because it forces the user to be in the right position. That's right until the user doesn't feel comfortable in that position and it's yeah. not right anymore. Yeah. yeah. And ergonomics, it's not only about what's the ideal perfect position it's actually a, what's the perfect position for you yeah. every person has different finger shapes or lens hand shape and thickness dimensions in the body or overall mm -hmm. even what could be comfortable for you could be very uncomfortable for me yeah so what could be ergonomically correct for me could be really uncomfortable for you i think it would have been better 
to have a slightly different shape in the keyboard where this area here it's a little bit wider, wider a little bit longer and this angle it's not a 90 degree angle where there's a slope this way even people with very long hands uh, could yeah. rest their hand in this area and also by making it wider and then uh, people with wider hands or twisting slightly the keyboard they would still rest comfortably the hand and actually something that may look like an aesthetic feature we added this extra area here and the reason we added this extra area is not for looks it's actually for functionality because there's two scenarios if you are gaming you put your hand one unit to the left so you need that extra space yeah. but there's a lot of people that even putting the, the hand in, in the right position they like doing this kind of things where they're moving their keyboard in different angles having that extra room allows you to do this but in this case the room is so narrow so specific that if you're in that position i think it would be extremely comfortable but or your hand is really large or you move it around in a different way it potentially could be uncomfortable sitting in the right position it's it? extra important with a keyboard with this shape if you sit in the right position and you uh, curve the fingers even if your hands are large i think you will find it comfortable i feel this keyboard is really large because it's like thick, thick. yeah it's tall yeah exactly but i'm talking large in the width width yeah and a little bit in the length and also the, the keyboard is close to two centimeters of extra material here that's not needed i would say it's a stylistic decision it's it's like it has all this border around. In this case, there's a, an element here to connect the cable. So this is required, but the rest, it's not. This connector could be deeper inside the keyboard and the, key, the footprint of the keyboard would be smaller. So there's multiple ways of making the keyboard footprint smaller. So you could make it smaller on the top and make it grow on the bottom. But to be honest, I think it has a, a balanced look because it has kind of a similar area on top yeah. on the side. And also it has another block here. So I think from an aesthetic point of view is fine. Before reaching the octopus face, talking about the unboxing, it's nice that it's also a black cardboard box, but something that I don't like is this bubble wrap paper. Why not? The reason behind it is because if you've paid 300 to 400 bucks for the keyboard or even more if you're buying the stand, I would expect better unboxing experience than this thing that is basically the cheapest bubble protection that you can find. Uh, what I would like, for example, if they had it black, it would give it a little bit of a better touch. Or if instead of being this bubble envelope, uh, we had a, a foam piece, I think it would look uh, much better and also it would give extra protection. Talking about the keyboard standing kit, it kind of looked like an octopus thingy. Seems fairly robust and well built, although it's quite light, but it's normal because it's uh, plastic. Let's move on to the... Assembling it maybe? Yeah. It looks fairly simple. You just need to screw it in there. Okay, so let's go for it. Okay, for this to assemble. Okay, so there's a little line here that you can see, max. This is the maximum angle that the keyboard can have. The first thing that catches my attention is that now the keyboard is raised like one centimeter and a half here in the Higher. corner, here like maybe three. From a denting point of view, the denting is not much, it's quite slight, quite low. But at the same time, the keyboard that was already thick is now very thicker. tall. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's even get, getting even thicker in the sense of this edge raises your hands. One of my, let's say, issues with keyboards that are so thick is that they force your body posture to be quite different. In this case, for me, I would need to elevate my elbows quite a bit. Yeah, so, or, or use a standing desk. Yeah, right. exactly. So in some cases, it makes it so tall that I could not use it with my regular desk or it would force myself to sit in a weird position, putting my elbows high so I can uh, reach and the, the position comfortably. The concept of having tenting, that's really nice. I would say that I don't like the execution uh, because it increases the overall height of the keyboard quite a bit. Yeah. And actually from the tenting kit of the race, it's one centimeter thick. And that's something that we didn't like. And for the Defy, we integrated the tenting kit inside the keyboard. So it's not a kit anymore. It's just the tenting legs inside the keyboard. So it's flat. Okay, if you want to have tenting, you can have it, but it's not the best execution. And it's not even that high of an angle. Something smart about this solution is that you can have a reverse tilting like now and you can have tending with the same device yeah. so from a manufacturing perspective they've designed one device that can accomplish both things the reverse tilting i like it much more than the tending and the reason behind this probably you're gonna be sitting on a very high chair or you're gonna be standing i can see how this is nicer still wobbling but much less i think this kind of wobble on, on usage is not gonna be an issue with that said the rubber feet are nice so i don't think this is gonna be sliding with the weight of the cure plus the weight of your hand so that's nice. Conclusion about the keyboard, I would say build quality is good. From an ergonomic standpoint, the keycaps 
are nice. The layout is nice. Mm -hmm. It has this little touch that has home row bump also for the pinky, also for the thumb, but the thumb one is not functional. Continue with the ergonomics. The venting kit is not a great solution because it raises the keyboard even more. Although it's nice that with only one piece, you can tent it and tilt it. Mm -hmm. So that's nice. And I would say maybe the weakest part from an ergonomic standpoint is kind of this shape yeah. that creates a very narrow area where your hand can be comfortable. A stylistic point of view, I think if you like the wood finishing and you like this kind of 50s, 60s vibe, you probably love the keyboard mm -hmm. but if i compare it to modern uh, electronics i think it has a completely different look my personal taste i, I don't like it but it's because i don't like this 50s 60s yeah. uh, look i think their execution of what they were trying to accomplish is great uh, to be honest so if you like it probably you will hey love it. what are you doing no oh you started without me actually we were just talking about you thanks again louise for your time and for giving us your insights about the keyboard your model 100 no problem, thank you. Well, I think this is my cue. I still have meetings with the shareholders. I need to meet with Manuel too. I have uh, some amazing products to create. I have to cut my hair and so on. So thank you, Dominique. Hey, See ya. Okay. Thanks, Luis. Hi, Dominique. Oh, hi, Mick. Thanks for coming. Uh -huh. My pleasure. So I know you've been using the Keyboardio Model 100 for a couple of months now. Could you please give us your feedback on your experience? Yeah, sure. Like overall, I must say it's quite nice typing on it. I really like the columnar layout and the sculpted keycaps and also the shape of the thumb keys. It follows the natural arch of your thumb. Very nice. Also the touch of the walnut when you place your palms on it. It's also a nice feeling. It doesn't get too hot or too cold in the winter. I have been using the Moonlander and the Digma Defy before, so I was already used to the columnar layout. It was only a matter of getting used to the specific stagger, the pinky stagger, and also the sculpted keycaps, because the Moonlander and the Defy have flat key well. Like a mixed pack between the Kinesis Advantage and the... But the Kinesis have a, has a deeper... Yeah, it has a, a key well, you know, like well. a proper key well, and this is kind of mimics that, mm -hmm. but you get hot swap switches however for the thumb keys i feel there's like not enough there's four thumb keys and then there's this funky the outer one is difficult for it to reach for me i would like to have one here you can see where my thumb rests here mm -hmm. no, i can easily hit a key that would be there the defy for example has five on the upper row and has three down there but you have the funky it's funky uh, it's a funky it's a fun funky it's a funky funk what's your experience my i tried using it it's okay like you can hold this and then get to another layer so using it's okay the thing is that you accidentally press it when you press space your thumb is there you can see that movement there when you press you tend to lower your hand you might accidentally press it and that's not fun that's not fun at all uh, so at the end i ended up deactivating them so as i said typing on it especially when it's flat it's good but i've had some problems with my overall posture it's a bit on the bulky side yeah. and if you add the tenting it's on the bulkier More. side for just 10 degrees tilting. I'm not too tall, I'm 5'9". Five, I'm five In order for me to have like a proper angle here, I need to sit really high. Because from this angle, your elbow is actually lower than your yes, wrist. And yes, yes, it should be higher, but I cannot sit any higher because my legs hit the table. Mm -hmm. That wouldn't be a problem with that. Uh, I'm not too tall, my torso is not too high. Maybe if my torso was bigger, that would be easier. That wouldn't be a problem with standing desk, if you're standing. But yes, yeah, so all that bulkiness, makes it more difficult to find the perfect posture. So it's not that you can't find a good posture, it's more difficult. Let's not beat that bush anymore. <laughs> uh, beat that bush. How about the LEDs? Did you find them useful or? It has south facing LEDs instead of north facing. You which, could see it actually here. Yeah, you can see and them. we mentioned it earlier. That makes us the legends of the keycaps are below, which is okay. But the thing is that these are custom keycaps. So this, why did they go with south facing when you cannot change these keycaps for any other keycaps? Maybe they could have gone for north facing mm -hmm. and they could have legends on top. And then you also have these secondary legends here. I don't find very useful because you're gonna modify that. My arrow mm -hmm. cluster is not nothing like that. It's like that. I just ignore those. Yeah. But each one of these has legends and they don't match what I have under. Some of them do because good thing you can swap this out. I wish that the keycaps were a bit more neutral. I do like the font. Yeah, I mean, the... it goes with the theme. You ask about the LEDs. Mm -hmm. I only have one thing about the LEDs besides being south facing is that when you turn the keyboard off, you turn it back on, you don't have lights. You have to activate it. I configure a LED previous key here. 
then you activate it. But if you didn't configure a LED previous key, what would how would you turn it well, on? Well, by default, the LED here is the LED next, so you have to cycle tour through all the LED ah. effects, and then you get to your LED. But if you put the LED previous, you go to the last LED effect, which is your custom LEDs. I wonder why they made it like that. I, li I looked into that, and they said that it's saving energy, so it doesn't consume much energy. But I mean, it's not a wireless keyboard, it's plugged to your computer. I use my LEDs a lot because you know, you, you change your layer and you have your uh, lights here and there. And yeah, it just feels like an added hurdle. Yeah, when you use it. When you turn it on, yeah, when you use it. particular way that I use the keyboard that is a bit of a deal breaker and this the cable. the cable not the cable itself but the problem is like where it is, where is like yeah. you can just try to move it there yeah but you have that and I like to have my keyboard split and with that cable here it tends to end up here in the middle I have to then use the mouse here so then my shoulder rotates a bit back you would need to kind of force yeah. it out force it to go out there. there this keyboard looks beautiful when you put it together mm -hmm. it looks like a butterfly really nice but not enough of a split how about the software we yeah let's let's try to install look. it and take a look yeah. and whatnot so to do minor changes is pretty straightforward let's say i have space here or i have algr here let's say i want command there okay so i just go there and click command, command. and that Save is changes. Changed. it has a key picker and then so you do that and to save, this is really good compared to, for example, the configurator server, the Moonlander mm -hmm. uh, Oryx. You can just save it. If you press save, it takes a little bit uh, more than, uh, for example, with Basecore. Yeah. Uh, but it's, it's already safe, so it's pretty fast. For the basic things, it's pretty intuitive. Uh, there's a few minor things, like for example, layer two, you cannot change this layer. Like you can change it, but it won't be saved. Like for example, if I go, Eight, or let I call I change that color. I'm, I know I'm going off script, but just bear with me. That's fine. Well, you changed it. Yes, but that layer two. Uh, it don't. It doesn't appear. Yeah. So you now, if I go here and I go, let's say shift to layer. Oh, let's make this shift to layer one. Okay. Yeah. So layers, shift to layer one. Okay, we we'll save that. It takes a bit. So, so you see. Colors don't match what I have here. Yeah, it doesn't match. Can we go to layer one? Yeah. yeah, so maybe it's just a minor bug. No, no, I think they have like something that is called auto numpad, something like that. Wherein you can't change the number pad. Yeah, you can change. Number one is locked. Maybe there's a way to change that, but I haven't found it. Yeah. But okay, you have the rest of the layers, so it's... It has a maximum of seven layers? Yes, well, actually eight. Sorry, so it's zero eight, to seven, yeah. so it's eight. Uh, but the number one is like a default. Locked. Yeah, but can you edit the others? Yes, you can. This is more, for example, here. This is my navigation layer. Nice. I have my arrows and whatnot. Can you do dual functions? Yes, you just select a key. Let's go to our main one. So for example, let's say here I have space, but I also want to shift to another layer. So I can go here to secondary action. Cool. Okay. And then I can select modifier or layer shift. Let's do layer shift. So then I can do layer three. Things are a bit hidden within menus, with yeah. menus and sub menus. Yeah, but the functions are there. And th there's a lot of little thing with colors. Let's say I want to have this home row or, you know, the J or many. I can go color changes to pink. But if I want to color the K, I also select the K, go to pink. And I think the only way to bulk color is to change the color itself from the color picker. Yes. Yeah, so if now if I want to change all of these to pink, I have to, I can just change it here. So once you've assigned your colors, you can change the colors easily. But assigning the colors is what is a bit cumbersome. Actually, this is how base core used to look like. Yes, so actually Basecore is a fork of Chrysalis mm -hmm. and uh, our firmware is a fork, it's based on Kaleidoscope, they're both open source, source and ours is open source too. The backend, the things that are behind are still uh, similar, so they have similar uh, features, but the core is there. It's the same. You can also create macros here, yes, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, you can, but there's two ways of configuring macros. One is reserved to full stack developers, I would say. Yeah. And the other one is dynamic macros, which is the easy one, but they use more memory on the keyboard. That's the thing, yeah. Dynamic macros allow you to create macros on the software itself. Yes. So you can go here and just select macro space and then 
add a macro and you can add a tab or a whole key. Uh, so let's say you want W and then you want, you know. You have to add another tab. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So you say you want to do what? West. Oh, you have to. Oh my. You God. have to do. Yeah. It's a. You have to add and then select. Okay. And as you said, macros created with this process will take more memory than the macros created with the Arduino yes. IDE. Yes. Here, if you go to macros, you have all the spaces assigned macros to keys to create and modify macros. You can use the Arduino IDE to mm -hmm. customize the kaleidoscope a sketch file for your keyboard. Yeah. If you're not proficient in programming, you would probably want to do dynamic macros. But if you want to try to configure your macros via the code, you would need to know how to code. Actually, we spent 30 minutes with Alex, our full stack developer, doing this and actually trying to figure out how to create the macros. Basically, you have to download Arduino, make a copy of the firmware, open the file using Arduino. You have to input the code in the firmware and then upload that to, to GitHub. <laughs> Actually, we bricked. We did. And that resulted in us contacting customer support, who, who was very helpful. Yes. And then they did say that there was a hiccup with the Chrysalis version. And so they just pointed us to the working version and we were able to fix it. As we said, if you're not proficient in programming or if you're not a coder. Yeah, just use the dynamic macros. Yeah. And also talking about customer support, they also have a Discord. Yeah. And they have a forum on their website. Mm -hmm. uh, so if you have any questions, most of them, like you Google them and they will shoot up. And they will help you configure anything that you need. Yeah. So Mick, what's your final word on this keyboard? So it's a good keyboard. If the Defy didn't exist, I would get this one over the Moonlander or the Kinesis Advantage, 100%. Okay. No, all day long. The key well is really comfortable. The thumb cluster, you know, the curve compared to the Moonlander that has that square thumb cluster that the keys are difficult to reach. This thumb cluster is really comfortable. So mm -hmm. it's really comfortable to type on it and it's, it's really nice. But you have to think about how bulky it is. I guess it's more about what features you appreciate, right? Yeah, like, do you like skull keycaps but don't want to go for a concave keyboard? Yeah, or are you tall? Uh, or do you use a standing desk and don't mind the bulkiness? Or are you okay with a few degrees of tenting? Yeah, right? or you're looking for a unique retro look and this fits your setup? Yeah, then this is the keyboard for you. Uh, and I can suit myself using it for years. And that's not something that I would say for other keyboards that I've tried. Well, we hope this review has given you some valuable insights. And for those who have tried the Keyboardio Model 100, how has your experience been? Let us know in the comments below.